about a partnership that's been described as two minds combining to form one comic genius. Their long collaboration has produced a gallery of characters who one critic lumped together as life's gentle losers. One of the women you know, the other you probably don't. Their names are Lily Tomlin and Jane Wagner. What would you call yourself in a word if someone forces you to define your occupation? Mm -hmm. I think of myself as a writer. Um, I think of myself as a star. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Writer, actress, actress. I'm an actress. I'm an actress. I'm an actress. She's a writer. And together we produce and direct what we what she writes for me to act. <laughs> I refuse to be intimidated by reality anymore. <laughs> what is reality anyway? Nothing but a collective hunch. <laughs> the latest thing Jane wrote for Lily to act is a play called The Search for Signs of Intelligent Life in the Universe. In it, Lily speaks Jane's mind through more than a dozen different characters. The central one, a bag woman, sorting through a decade of cultural garbage. I made some studies. Reality is a leading cause of stress amongst those in touch with it. I could take reality in small doses, but as a lifestyle, I found it too confining. I still have to convince people that somehow I'm not really secretly writing it. Because I'm so invested in it emotionally, and I love the material so much, and it's the nature of how I perform, uh, people can't believe that I'm not kind of making it up every night. Or it's, there's something so, you know, maybe there's something, it seems spontaneous, or it seems so fresh. And, uh, and of course, it's worked and honed and worked and refined, and, um, and every word of it is hers. Wow, going crazy was the best thing ever happened to me. I don't say it's for everybody. Some people couldn't cope. <laughs> is it sort of a relief to you that you don't have to perform your material? Oh, every time I see Lily doing it, I don't, uh, I, I don't know how they go through it. Um, She's an Amazon, and she, you know, she has amazing energy. She's on a level that performers have to be on, I think, where I'm just more observing and more abstract, more passive. So I, I very often think, oh, thank God, <laughs> I'm, um, I'm there alone with the typewriter, with my books, and with my thoughts. Jane Wagner thinks about a lot. She thinks about quantum physics. She thinks about evolution. She thinks we developed language out of a deep need to complain. Out of her typewriter have come enough thoughts for two plays, three albums, two movies, and six television specials. Once they're written, she shares them with Lily. It is Lily who shares them with the world. One rainy dingy. <laughs> a gracious hello. Have I reached the party to whom I am speaking? For 16 years, Jane has provided the parties through whom Lily was speaking with new things to say. Some of the characters, like Ernestine, were Lily's. Chukunk, 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 chukunk. So when people come to me and they say, Tommy, Tommy Velour, what would you do if you ruled the world? Chukunk. Some of the characters are Jane's, and some their contributions are inseparable. But if I ruled the world, every dude would have a chip. To behold, all my records would turn solid gold. I don't think you'd have one without the other. Saying what Lily is saying and being what Lily is being. Actress Eileen Brennan has been a friend since she worked with him on a TV special seven years ago. She's the half. She's half. Jane carries it here and Lily carries it out here. Like a constant relay. Actually, it's like uh, Bud Adam and Lou Costello. You wouldn't have one without the other. How could you? You like boys? <laughs> Some of them are like them, some of them not. Their partnership started back when Lily was doing Edith Ann on Laugh-In. Because Jane Phillips takes his peony out of school. Lily decided Edith Ann needed more depth. Jane had written a television movie. Lily saw it and called Jane for help. They have worked together and lived together ever since. When you first started working with Lily, can you characterize what you brought to the character of Edith Ann? Material, for one thing. <laughs> Just plain lines, yeah. huh? Mm -hmm. and, um, and a sensibility that was very close to Lily's, I think, was like um, our childhood, uh, our, 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 our experiences in, uh, 
when we were young seemed to be, uh, even though she was in Detroit and I was in, in Tennessee, um, they seemed to be similar in some ways. What's your favorite pastime? <laughs> a favorite. Your favorite my favorite time was with my grandma. And now she's not here no more. She's my favorite pastime. Were you both always outsiders? I was an outsider, I think. I was shy and um, did not go around knocking on people's doors. I would well, not even were... answer if anybody knocked on my door. <laughs> I was the most popular girl in high school. I never reckoned, I know it, that seems so strange Honestly? to me. Honestly? Yeah, mm -hmm. but I was absent a year out of three. Mm -hmm. Absence due to what? Your hair didn't turn my out right. My hair didn't turn out good. I'd stay out 12, 13 days in a row if my hair didn't turn out right. You have worked <laughs> together, lived together, collaborated on all of these projects, how do you keep a closeness that's closer than a lot of marriages? Well, I guess, again, trust, ultimately, even though we'll argue and fight over certain things the way something should be done. This magic is made by the two of them coming together. With respect and love, and I'm sure a lot of screaming. As I know, I've heard them, I've heard them get a little testy, but they're so funny. Sometimes I am badly behaved and <laughs> impatient. And like, you see it at first and you say, and you could be very critical. Well, this isn't what I was expecting. This isn't the way it's supposed That's to be. That's what she does, exactly. It's a good <laughs> imitation. This is of herself. A very good mimic. You shout and back? Shout? Shout? Oh, yeah. never. Never. <laughs> Her, no. Um, shout, I no, I'm more insidious, I think. Who wins more often? Well, it's not winning so much as... I think you do, I think. Right. No. Don't you? It's not winning so much as I have so the sense of losing finally. more often. <laughs> I know that. <laughs> Jane Wagner's sense of losing was enhanced by this movie she wrote and directed called Moment by Moment. Nothing tests creative trust quite so much as a total flop. And critics called this film simply awful. Let's smoke some pot. No. I don't want you doing drugs. You? Why not? When you fail in this business, it's like if I'd failed even if I'd done a novel, it would have been less, but a movie with um, John Travolta and Lily, and it, it had such a high profile. So it was, it was heavy. It was hard. Was that harder for Jane than for you? Because she wrote it, it was her first oh, directing. Oh, I think harder, sure, was... because uh, harder in the sense that uh, she'd never had the kind of acknowledgement I'd had to begin with. I had all that. She got most of the criticism for any failure, and I got most of the uh, recognition for success. So it was out of balance. And it was also hard to get back in and work again and believe that I had something to say and uh, that, it, that it was, um, that there was a reason for me to go on. But go on she did, with her writing and with Lily. Together they did something stars rarely do. They started small. Over a two-year period, Jane wrote and rewrote The Search for Signs of Intelligent Life in the Universe, while Lily tried out the characters in front of anyone they could get to watch. There were no other partners in the play. It was their money, their time, their talent. Uh, all my life, I've wanted to be somebody, but I see now I should have been more specific. I've never worked on another project that I've ever felt as personally about. Jane's sensibility so perfectly uh, matches mine and and I'm so delighted by the th kinds of things she comes up with. We were doing it together and um, put our own money into it and everything. And so that was, uh, I mean, maybe that was just foolish, but now it was, of course, turned out to be the best thing. Jane! Jane! Come on. When the play finally opened in New York, this time the critics loved them. And the audience not only stood up for the star, they cried out for the author. It wasn't like I set out, I'm going to prove something. But after uh, it was over and, and opening night, when I, uh, I didn't get that acknowledgement, I, I realized that it was important to me. <laughs> so it, that kind of acknowledgement means a lot, yes. Thank you all. I first read about her oh, a few weeks ago in the New York Times. 
did quite an elaborate story about her and her talent. She's a comedian, she's been playing supper clubs in New York and around the country and winning rave reviews wherever she plays. Here's Lily Tomlin. My name is Lily Tomlin. I'm very happy to be here tonight. Uh, I hadn't always planned to be a comedian. Uh, I had really intended to have a dance career, and I had studied the ballet for 10 years. Unfortunately, my dancing career was cut short. Uh, one morning when my mother and I were having a little breakfast, she dropped a six-pack on my instep. <laughs> However, <laughs> However, I, I intend to bring to you tonight uh, uh, one of the relatives in my family. All the women in my family are quite extraordinary. And my mother's sister uh, gained uh, quite a place for herself in the cosmetic industry. Uh, she was at one time, at the zenith of her career, she was known as the world's foremost beauty expert. And I'd like to introduce her to you tonight. complexion. <laughs> 